In this tutorial, we're going to be using the number one Android library in GitHub. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to be using the Universal Image Library to run on our grid gallery and try testing its performance and see how easy it is to set up. Okay, let's make a start. Okay, so when I just done a Google for Universal Image Loader, it's taken me straight to GitHub. I think that's okay. We've got documentation for here. And if you want to know where I got number one Android library for GitHub. It says it's here. So that's my reference. Okay, scroll on down. First thing we want to do is how to set up. So we can cl click the quick setup. Okay, it gives us a Gradle dependency. Nice. Now if we go into Android Studio, so we'll put that into our Gradle. And resync the Gradle files. That's done. Okay, now let's... Okay. So after we've done that Android manifest, I've already done that to get right external storage permissions. It says use an application or activity class to basically set up and configure your image loader. And so it's got documentation down here, but one thing about the universal image loader is it's got a lot of settings, a lot of configurations, and out of the box I believe you don't get no cache, so we want that. Okay, so I recommend to go to the useful info link. And as it says here, caching is not enabled by default. So we have to enable that here. And so it gives us the information here. So first thing you need to do is to create default options builder and add those settings in there. Okay, so if I go back to my code, I'm going to add this into my application. So we've got my gallery application. I need to comment out Fresco. Make sure that's commented out for the other libraries. Okay, so first thing here, display image options, and we'll set up the builder for that. And what does it have there? It's just display options builder. Okay, and now we need to do the cache and memory and cache on disk, make that true. Cache and memory true. Cache and disk true. And what comes on the end, and then we call build at the end. Okay, so we've set up the display image options with our caches. See what ne happens next. Okay, next we need to set up the configuration config. Okay, image loader configuration. And I believe this takes get application context. And see what we've got there. And Okay, so that's got a builder as well with the application context. Uh, 
that takes get application context. Let's close down the side pane here. Okay, and it's going to take a couple of settings here, isn't it? Uh, default display options, and that's where we enter in our default options we created above. And we enter in our display options. And now we can just build. Okay, and now we actually create the image loader itself with the config. And as you can see the comment here, do it on application start, which is what I'm doing. I'm doing on that application, not an activity. Image loader get image loader dot get instance. Memory's terrible today. In it with the config. And we'll pass an image loader configuration. Okay, that's now happened. Um, I was just focusing about setting up the caches for this because everything we're using cache for our tests now. Um, there's a bunch of other settings, but I'm just going to leave that out for this moment in time and I might re revisit this application if need, by, need be. Anyway, our um, universal image loaders are now set up, so we can just go and call it from inside an image adapter. So we'll come out Picasso. Okay, so we can call the image loader like this, universal image loader, get instance, display image. Now, we're loading from our file, so we're going to need to pass our address of our file in this sort of format here, pass. Right, the format of the string does have to start with file in front, so we do need to append that in front of our string. like such and now we can add our um, image file and we set that to string and then from the URI just the uh, display image API wants this to be in a string as well so we can set that to string and th then it's a matter of getting the uh, uh, image file itself and we can get that from the holder And that's it. So there was a little bit more involved just around this area here by passing the URI and appending the file just in a format that the universal uh, image loader will recognize. Now let's try running that and see what happens. I'm recording that. I think it's already started doing image preloading here. Anyway, just scroll on down. Potentially, I might have seen a bit of concurrency issues, but it seems to be okay now. So that's something we might have to keep a look at and look in the documentation. But everything's inside cache and it's all scrolling fine now. Okay, I'll just stop recording. Okay, so that was just a basic setup of the Universal Image Loader. Um, as you can see, it needed a little bit of configuration set up at the beginning and a little bit of thought calling when you actually call it for this recycle view. It does seem to run okay, but there's so many different settings and options. This looks like a very powerful image library solution if you want to use it. Um, interesting feedback about this one from you. Um, if you've got any questions and if I get the chance, I will look at the options in a bit more detail to see if anything's pertinent. I might have seen a slight bit of concurrency issues at the very beginning when I was preloading, but they seemed to go away once everything was fully in cache. But other than that, um, scrolling scenes, speed seems comparable with all the other image libraries we've tested so far. Okay, that's, that's it for this one. Um, if you're enjoying my tutorials and you've had a chance to look at my other tutorials and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. That's all for this one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.